The 2023 edition of this Defi Azimut Laureant Agglomeration heralds a turning point for the multi-format event created by Jane Marie Courtville back in 2011. Playing host to 34 Amokas in Laureant La Base Brittany, in what is this year's biggest lineup for the fleet, the Defi Azimut has shown that it has the stature of a major race meet. With the expert teams really keen to get involved, the fleet was able to cope admirably with the autumnal weather and compete in the two main events to crown a very fine champion. Chiral, skippered by Jeremy Bayou and Frank Camars, was the standout performer in this 13th edition thanks to her dazzling speed and her amazing control in flight mode. The incredibly high standard of the competition ensured that everyone brought their a game, as demonstrated in today's speed runs contested at supersonic speeds and won by Paprik Arkia, our skippered by Johan Richem and Yen Elis. The lowdown on a breathtaking edition. An event perfectly orchestrated despite some tough weather conditions. Chiral, champion of the 48-hour azimuth, after a top-flight match, an epic speed runs rounded off the action in the Bay of Lorient producing a challenge open to the outside and a forum for all manner of influences within the sphere of offshore racing. It was within the context of this very defi azimuth, back in 2018, that Chiral MKI, a VPLP design, became the first foil-born Amoka. The amazing images circumnavigated the globe, yet they left in their wake a number of rather skeptical observers. Five years on, the show put on by the skippers, accompanied by their guests, was surely the finest demonstration that the progress of technology never stops. In today's final, the top 12 foiling Amokas powered through the mint green waters of Le Coureau de Groy, flying along at between 30 and 35 knots leaving some truly unforgettable images in their wake. Some breathtaking speed runs and a stellar 48-hour match. Chiral, MK2, the Manuart design launched last year by Jeremy Bayou, who is this year supported by Frank Camars, did not secure outright victory. However, she did post the best time of the day with an average of 30.2 knots, driving the point home after her victory in the 48H azimuth. The latter proved to be an incredibly comprehensive course in bracing conditions and the perfect test of stamina, speed and reliability prior to the Transat Jacques Varby, for which the Defi azimuth was a qualifier. However, the main takeaway from this 13th edition certainly doesn't centre on just a single runner and rider pairing. The competition is incredibly tight, and we can see that the skippers are not frightened to go on the attack in all the different conditions. Three or four boats posted standout performances, but a good 15 or so are sailing at a very high standard, said a delighted Antoine Mermod, president of Class Amoka, this evening. The arrival on the scene of the latest generation foilers, Massif Santi Provoyance Dalen, Bidegori, and Paprik Arkia Richem Elis, has shaken up the hierarchy and confirmed that everyone has a shot at the top spot. This is equally true for boats like Malaysia Sea Explorer, Herman, Harris, and Biotherm, Mail Hat, Lobato, which competed in the ocean race and racked up a great deal of experience in their sprint around the world. Some boats, like for the planet, Good Child, Ruyant, Third, as well as Teamwork, the Exural MK are helmed by Justine Metros and Julian Villian, who finished sixth, have demonstrated that the slightly older boats sailed very well are also still capable of posting fantastic performances. Moreover, the mixed duos have been a real force to be reckoned with in this edition. Sam Davies, accompanied at late notice by her new co-skipper Jack Bautel, finished fifth. Meantime, the young Violette Dorange proved to be one of the big hits of the Defi. Accompanied by the experienced Damien Guillou, the 22-year-old managed to secure 13th place on Devenir, Jean Lecam's old boat, and top-ranked daggerboard boat in what was a formidable race within a race. Equally, two female onboard reporters and Boge for best photo and Mathild Fontan for best video have secured victory in the media competition, which is organised every year by the Defi Azimut. The only sorry tale in this year's event review is Corum's currently unexplained dismasting which confirms that the Amoka's mast remains their Achilles' heel. It's a factor that will need to be taken into account given the numerous races which await the skippers prior to the Vonda Globe 2024, 
an event which will be synonymous with the end of a race cycle that began as the previous round the world race concluded in 2021. New faces and some great encounters. In conjunction with the action out on the water, five conferences hosted in the auditorium within the site de la Voile Eric Tabali were a dense platform for exchange and discussion, which were greatly enjoyed by both the local ecosystem in Lorient and the public. Commencing on Tuesday with a workshop on integration in offshore racing on the initiative of Group Apicil, they continued throughout the day on Friday. Bretagne Development Innovation organised three conferences on topics ranging from artificial intelligence applied to offshore courses, to the progress of carbon-free energies on Amokas and the latest developments in foiling, with notable links to the America's Cup. Every one of them was an opportunity to welcome some top-level contributors sourced from a rich seam of talent from within Brittany's marine industry, which is at the forefront of all these topics. Finally, the presence of 500 children from local schools within the Lorient agglomeration and an import visit from the expedition Yacht Tara expanded the DEFIS horizon still further. My takeaway from these five exceptional days is the great intermixture of all these audiences. The skippers, their teams, the onboard reporters, all these new sailors, the presence of Penn, Duick and Tara, the excellent performances by the female contingent, including the youngest sailor in the race, for whom the Defi Azimut will always be her first ever experience of racing in a mocha. All that fills me with joy and prompts me to label the Defi as a wonderful forum, enthused Jane-Marie Courtville this evening as he stepped off the video production Catamaran Royale, which was following all the action in the speed runs. This exceptional footage will forge the reputation of the Defi Azimut, whose fantastic history is becoming increasingly rich with every edition. Comme l'azimut, c'est souvent très complet avec un parcours qui permet de faire toutes les allures. Donc c'est rassurant de terminer devant. Ça veut dire qu'en termes de vitesse, on n'est pas à la rue, loin de là. Il y a un gros gros niveau, donc euh, quand tu gagnes des courses comme ça, aussi intense, euh, c'est que t'es es pas mal. Moi, ça va être ma troisième victoire, et puis comme c'est la première, ouais, je crois. Bon, voilà. Donc j'aime bien cette course, et elle me rend bien. Ouais, ouais, bah c'est ça qui était bien sur cette course. Quand on a fait, il y avait tout, il y a du prêt, du racing, du portant dans de la mer. Voilà, on a pu voir. Bah après, c'était un peu faussé par les grains, parce que les, 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 voilà, les forces et les directions de vent étaient un peu, étaient un peu différentes. Mais bon, on, malgré tout, on peut quand même tirer quelques, quelques petites conclusions. Ouais. Mais non, c'est ouais, une course intense et intéressante. course euh, où on s'est bien compris tout de suite. On s'est bien amusé avec ces parcours euh, sympas, avec euh, pas mal de, de marques, pas mal de en jeu et on a passé euh, 48 heures à jouer avec, euh, avec 3-4 bateaux en tête donc c'était tout ce qu'on veut d'un regard. Ah 